Subaru Forester is a popular compact crossover SUV produced by the Japanese automaker Subaru. It has a rich history dating back to its introduction in the late 1990s. Throughout its history, the Subaru Forester has been known for its systematical all-wheel drive system, boxer engine configuration, and rugged versatility. Whether you own a Subaru or not, you can't help but notice the logo of 5 stars. For the members of the Forester Nation Car Club, driven by passion, defined by compassion. Forester Nation is a car club uh, that comprises of uh, Subaru Forester owners in Kenya. <coughs> we were founded in 2015. Um, I think we started out as a club with only six members and we've grown to over 300 uh, so far, spread across the country. And uh, our club is uh, founded on a number of objectives. I'm actually the founder and the chair. Um, just to put it this way, we were, there is the parent club. Uh, it used to be called Subaru Owners Club. <clears throat> but for one reason or the other, there was a fallout because of difference in ideologies. And that is how uh, the opportunity for Forrester Nation to come up uh, presented itself. Um, so what happened is, initially, when, when the fallout happened, I, I decided to, to quit um, the, the, the other club. And when I moved, we, the people who followed me, because even in the previous club, I was also uh, part of the leadership team. So it was, it was a matter of uh, a fallout in, in terms of our belief systems and um, <clears throat> our ideologies on how we should lead the group and, and, and uh, roll out the, their plan. So when I moved out, um, <coughs> around like six guys followed me. So we started our own WhatsApp group and uh, it coincidentally happened that majority of them were Forester owners. Yeah, um, so that is how Forester Nation started. <coughs> and then we started doing drives and events, just that small number. And uh, with time, other members started plugging in, and that is how the group has grown over the years to be what it is now. Uh, my name is Kim Boria. Uh, I joined uh, I'm now at about uh, five, five years old in uh, Forest Edition. Uh, one of the main reasons why I joined Forest Edition for me was mainly because of the causes uh, that the, the club runs. I was very much interested in a charity, but beyond that, I'm, I'm a big car enthusiast. I personally have uh, spent a lot of time uh, with uh, Subaru to an extent where I have ended up even coming up with a garage for the same. So for me, it's a big passion. Uh, so being able to combine that passion with uh, the charity work that we do, for me, that has been, it's a win-win. You know, it's a big, big win for me. Uh, my family is also a big part of it. So that makes it, I think, uh, one of the best places that uh, uh, I have tried, so to speak. Well, the infancy was at six members, but we've grown over, uh, to over 300 members over the years. Um, and our club is anchored on a number of objectives, uh, both uh, within the club and also looking at how do we leverage on the membership to actually go beyond ourselves. So within the club, um, number one, we use that platform to network and see how do we add value to each other's lives, of course, based on the diversity in our career backgrounds. Number two, we also leverage on the economies of scale to procure services that are of common interest. Uh, things like insurance, road rescue services, and any other services that we deem um, needed by members of the club. And then uh, we also hang out together, have fun together. Um, what is out here and what most people know um, is the charity part. Um, we organize drives um, and then choose a destination where we go and see what is it that we can be able to do in the different places. Um, majority of our members are, um, I would say, the youth. Um, let's say the age range of from 25 to 45, although we also have older people. And um, 
for us i think what 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 fosters that sense of loyalty to the club and inclusivity is the fact that we uphold a value system that is kind of inclusive and accommodative um, contrary to the perception that is normally out here about subaru um, and it so happens that people who've interacted with us and learned what we do actually have a total turnaround in terms of how they perceive us and, and uh, the relationship to, to the brand. For most owners, it's where the wilderness meets compassion and creativity. The main reason for this is uh, the Subaru I have is mainly for the purpose of a build. We, we've tried to push the boundaries of uh, what we can be able to do with Subaru. The car culture in Kenya right now is really growing. People are getting uh, more open-minded with the kind of vehicles we have. We are really going back to the older vehicles, you know, and trying to see what it is that we can do, you know, pushing the boundaries of power, pushing the boundaries of design, which is a good thing. So beyond that, of course, you have a daily car <laughs> that you use. Eh? Uh, it's, uh, it's not that you cannot use the Subaru daily, but the moment you start doing big builds, eh, it's not something that you can uh, work with every day because you're always tinkering, it's always in the garage, you know, but we just make sure that when we have the big grants that the vehicles are available for the same years. But there are some of us who use them as uh, the daily vehicles. Let's take a look at Dusk, for instance. Dusk is a 23-year-old car. This is a, a SG5 Forester 2000 edition. Um, when I got the car, it was completely stock, just normal vehicle. It was actually out of. Uh, did have most of what you see with it. So I'll just take you around and show you some of the upgrades that I've been able to do. So when you got the car, it was uh, silver. Changed that color to maroon. Now it's uh, moonstone grey. I settled on this color simply because I, I love cool colors, you know. Uh, so this is moonstone grey. Uh, some of the upgrades beside the paint that you've been able to do um, is, uh, as you can see, the lightings. Uh, the lights are modern. These are uh, projectile, projector lights, both for the, for the fog lights and for the headlights. All these are modern. Um, the, some of the extras also include the eyelids. We have the eyelids on the lights. Um, we have uh, the deflector. The deflector. What this helps you is uh, to keep the chips away from the windscreen. Uh, we also have an aftermarket bumper. This is not a stock bumper. This is an aftermarket bumper. It comes with a cross spots. We also have a front mount intercooler. Maybe that will be able to see in but uh, we have an extra intercooler. The Subarus come with an intercooler uh, in the hood. Uh, I opted to move mine for better airing at the front. Uh, besides that, we also have the canards. These are customized. I came up with this, something I'd seen online. I didn't know how it would look, but uh, since we're all about pushing the boundaries, I thought I would come up with something different for the vehicles. Eh? So these are canards that we made out of CNC. Uh, they are also hydro dipped. Um, besides that, the hood is also, uh, we created vents for the hood. This helps in cooling down the vehicle. Uh, we came up with a different style of the same. So this is something new that we were trying, uh, but it helps a lot in dissipating the heat that comes from the hood. So that is also very helpful, uh, yes. We have, um, these are all improvements uh, in the vehicle. This is an SG9 uh, hood scope. This does not belong to this car, but it was also an upgrade on the same. Very little, very little uh, orig originates from this vehicle. Yeah, so that's all the front. I'll show, this is, goes straight into the engine. That's an external wastegate pipe. I preferred to vent it right through the, the scoop, just for style. You can vent it from anywhere, down, up, but I preferred having it there. I feel it looks cooler right from that point. Yes, um, the vehicle comes also with a sunroof, but we did not have a sunroof originally. We did not have a sunroof originally. The vehicle, uh, we uh, came with a whole new 
roof that had a sunroof and did the installation of the same just to you know a sunroof looks cooler yes yeah so we can take a look at the wheels we um, one, one of the things that you really need to improve with fast vehicles is the braking you need to have a really good braking system that's actually one of the modes that we encourage people to do so i installed uh, endless calipers uh, both the front and the back endless calipers have very good stopping power they come with uh, floating rotors the front is uh, what we call a six spot uh, caliper uh, the ribs are deep dish uh, ribs 18 inch uh, vox uh, uh, with uh, fitted with uh, uh, 18 inch rib 18 inch uh, tires also so besides that if we check the back wheel we have uh, also an endless caliper this is a four port also helps with very good uh, provides very good braking for the same with uh, floating rotors also so this provides very good braking for the vehicle because uh, with some speeds we just ensure that uh, we also keep safe and this is one of the first steps in boarding a vehicle yeah so we also have an aftermarket bumper. These are, the aftermarket bumper comes with an aftermarket lid. This is not the stock bumper of the vehicle. So the stock uh, bumper for the vehicle. Uh, so this is also aftermarket. The tail lights are also SG9. Like I said, this is an SG5. So we have upgraded the vehicle. So these are SG9 tail lights also. It's an upgrade from the original ones that we have. These are blackened in the, in the inside. Um, we also were looking for, you know, what is it that I can do that is a bit different from other vehicles. A lot of people have normal, you know, have normal wings and normal, you know, installation. Some of these things come stock. So what we decided to do is try something different. Uh, we recreated this at my garage and uh, came up with a different wing, you know, something that uh, just gives it a special, unique look. That's why you can see it is uh, actually has the name, eh? Dusk on it. So we were able to do the wing and able to do the mid spoiler on the same. So just creating something different on the same, yes. Oh, maybe you can take a look inside. Uh, we have leather back STI bucket seats, the electric, yes. So the interior has also been modified to a certain extent. Uh, we have a Momo steering. This is not the stock steering for the vehicle. Uh, this feels a little bit better on the same. I have uh, two radio uh, systems. One of the radios, I use it for gauges. That's the electronic gauges. And this other one definitely for music. Uh, we've installed the music. Uh, that's the front camera for the vehicle. Um, we also have uh, normal gauges. These are the manual gauges on this side, if you may. Uh, these are the manual gauges of the vehicles. These are uh, they. You're able to monitor the boost. You're able to monitor the oil temperature. You're able to monitor the water temperature. You're able, to, you know, uh, to monitor the oil pressure also. Uh, this is a bit different from the digital one. The digital one gives you more parameters that you're able to monitor through the car. Uh, this is a meth button. Uh, the, the vehicle comes with meth, methane, uh, methanol, sorry, methanol injection that gives you some extra boost in the vehicle, which is also definitely it's an awesome thing, yes. Um, other than that, everything else is stock inside the vehicle, yes. Yeah, we have redone definitely the dashboard. Uh, the interior has been uh, reupholstered. Uh, <coughs> like I said, these are 23 year old vehicles, so these are some of the things that you need to, to be able to look at. Yes. Ah, yes, it's a manual. <laughs> it's a manual, it's a stick shift. Uh, this marries very well with the engine. Uh, so it was an auto before, actually. So this is a, a very big conversion.
The Subaru has gained a loyal following among those who appreciate its combination of off-road capability and everyday practicality, making it a strong competitor for the compact SUV market. Granted, everyone pimps theirs differently. Uh, I've done quite a number of modifications on it, uh, starting from the engine. Um, the car is a 202, but I have a 2006 engine in it. Uh, upgraded the turbo to a VF30. Uh, the transmission was initially automatic. I swapped it to a five-speed manual. And then um, the suspension, um, I'm using the STI suspension. Going to the brakes, I have the 17Z uh, six-port with uh, drilled and grooved um, uh, rotors. Uh, so for six-port for the front, um, two-port for the rear. Then um, coming to the interior, um, <coughs> This is 2006 um, steering upgrade also. Then uh, let me just crank it up. Then something else I've added on this car that wasn't there. I've, I've put this screen here to basically assist with uh, monitoring the car parameters. So I'm able to read the several parameters. You can get the coolant temperature, you can get the air fuel ratio, you can get the turbo performance, uh, mass airflow, and whatnot. Subaru Forester, this is how it looks like. Zero modes and a good car for daily driving and for running your errands. So these are 207, 2007 Forester. They call it the second gen SG5. It was manufactured in the year 2007. It's basic, running on basic uh, tires, rims, brakes, everything basic. These are 17, 17 rims, pro drives from Subaru. Uh, the interior is basic, basic everything. So this one, uh, someone looking for a car to use for daily, I would recommend for this one. The only thing that has been changed on this car is this, uh, this old scope. Basically to say what? More air to the engine just for protecting the engine. Yeah, let me show you the engine. So this is the engine bay, as you can see. Nothing much to say about it. Just a stock engine, stock intercooler. The only thing that he has changed on this car is uh, the intake, nothing else. Everything stock, stock, the radiator, the turbo, everything stock. Well, it's not just about owning their Subaru Forester. It's about the big hearts of the people behind the wheels. Socioeconomic events that support uh, the main agendas in the country, which are, for instance, we've done, like you say, tree planting. Um, uh, we've done, uh, 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 how, how do we call it, quite a number of uh, other supportive events because through the year we try to make sure we have about three to four events. The first event is usually just done within Nairobi. The second event is done uh, without Nairobi but not further than about 200 kilometers. Um, then we have the third event, which is usually one of the biggest events. We always end up going down to the coast. Uh, sometimes we do Malindi, sometimes we are able to do, you know, other further towns. Last year, this year actually, was one of the big exceptions because we introduced the East Africa run, whereby we were able to go to Uganda. It was amazing. Uh, the turn up was amazing. It was crazy because we, we, yes, we expected it to work out, but we had actually more than 60 vehicles attend the event. And you know, that was a very hefty investment, even for the ones who went. Eh? Uh, but to have all these people come together and go and, uh, you know, change other, uh, you know, other people's lives uh, through that whole distance, that was an amazing experience. Uh, uh, children's home at uh, Indiani that was really going through a rough time. We were able to uh, set up a, you know, a water system for them. We got for them tanks. We did the gutters, and this is through a lot of sponsors and individuals that come in to you know, just work with us. This year we are doing the same. We are still going to a children's home for the disabled in Portrees, and uh, we hope to make a difference, of course, through the support that we get from the members and also from our partners.
But it's not just about the donations. It's about building connections and sharing moments of warmth and laughter. So yes, we do have all these events coming together. But besides that, we have tried to create a family around Forest Tradition. Uh, so we have other small events uh, where families, uh, we have family meetups in the weekends, we have, uh, you know, just car meetups as friends in the weekends. So besides the big charity meetups, we also have meetups where we just get to know each other, where we get to talk about our vehicles, where we get to just hang out. Um, something else that we also do is sharing of knowledge because um, <clears throat> out here there's, uh, there's, 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 there's what, uh, let me say deficit of knowledge. People depend on mechanics and sometimes people get information from very incredible, non-credible sources like uh, mechanics who are not very well versed with, with vehicles. Uh, yes, I would say we have. Uh, like right now, I think uh, there's a Bashariki, uh, the competition going on. I think the club is uh, has been nominated. Uh, last time, last year, with the same uh, in the same competition, I think we were runners up. Uh, so this year, we hope maybe to scoop something. But even at our individual levels, car levels, we've been able to enter some of these uh, car shows. Um, uh, personally, I've taken my car for one or two shows. And um, it's a great time to expose the brand and at the same time show people what we're able to do, yes. So we have, yes. One thing I'll tell you for free is that, yes, Subaru's, uh, what would you call it, the, the cars are outstanding in themselves, yes. Um, just like any other vehicle that is stereotyped, you hear Mercedes people are like this, Subaru people are like this, uh, uh, motorbike people are like this and all that. Uh, the stereotypes are, for us, more than welcome because they make part of the culture, what it is. Eh? Of course there are truths in it, and there are um, not lies, but, but there are exceptions in the same, whereby you find not every Subaru driver is unruly, you know? And there are those, a lot of young people who are coming in and they love how the vehicles sound, how the vehicles run, and they, you know, they want to try it out in the streets. For us, let's say with time, we've been in the business for quite a long time. On Facebook, we go by Forest Nation Kenya. We have a group, and at the same time, we have a page. So all you need to do is just request. Uh, on uh, social media is also Forest Nation Kenya. Uh, on uh, Instagram, that is, that is also Forest Nation Kenya. Um, I think those those three are the main groups. Uh, we also have some groups. We have Forest Nation on Telegram. That one is usually done through a uh, request for the Forest Nation owners. But during the trips, we also have groups that we create for us to be able to handle the itinerary. So anybody else who comes in that is not in Forest Tradition gets to be added in some of those groups.